So it was coming home then, it was welcome to come back to Canada well, after, yeah. after mm -hmm. England. And you went back to England with other plays, yes? I went back with The Glass Cage. and uh, Which played in the West End. Yeah, things were quite different after that. I got a lot of good stuff. Right. And that was the late 60s then? No. No, The Glass Cage was 57. And I stayed over there after that. So my question then is, was there a dilemma in inside Barbara as an actress saying, I would rather have the stakes of a, of a career in a much larger con cultural country or come back to the sort of pioneering theater that we were trying to do here? Was that a, a tug of war in you or? Uh, not, not really at that point. I was in a relationship. You know, so um, right, yeah, right. With Max Helpman. No, no. This is pre-Max, post-Max. Pack post-Max. Post-Max. Out the window by then. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Max. Yeah. I was in the Mary Wise of Windsor with him. Oh really? Oh yeah, yeah. no. I'm glad I did one thing with him. Yeah, he was a funny man. He was. <laughs> textured, textured, and textured. Yes. That voice. Yeah. Wow. Um, so the crest, so Donald, uh, the crest was a creation of Donald Davis and Murray Davis, your two brothers? Yeah. And were you, when you came back, were you then part of that, making it all happen? Well, I was, I was there. I think I was mostly um, sort of a buffer between the two of them, you know. Um, I didn't make any of the decisions. They did, they did all that. But I sat in on the, uh, all the production meetings, giving my two cents worth, which mostly they didn't listen to. But. And do they have a tough time setting that company up? Yes. Yes. For, ex for example, uh, the mindset um, was um, John Bassett was very interested in doing but he wanted, he was willing to put money into it but only if they brought in American stars. So uh, they said no. So Donald and Murray said no, this is a Canadian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah. That takes uh, fortitude to turn down financing money yeah. and stick to your creative guns. And was there resist were you welcomed by Toronto or resisted by Toronto? Um, well, I think to begin with, it was a novelty. Well, we were resisted in that that um, the opening night, the the theater was picketed by by the stagehands union. But it was because in those days the musicians union didn't picket and. The Musicians' Union wanted the Crest to have an orchestra to, for everything. Uh, you probably don't remember Walter Murdoch, but he was a heavy-handed head of the Musicians' Union in those if days. If I remember correctly, there God Save the Queen had to be played at the beginning of every performance yes. and it had to be pay, played by live musicians, irregardless whether they had anything else well, to do with the Well, in, in, the, the, in, the, um, in the Royal Alex, yes. Well, uh, I mean, there was no way that the Crest could afford to uh, have three musicians sitting around doing nothing. So they said, yes, when we do musicals, of course we'll use union musicians. But uh, as I say, they, uh, the the musicians' union didn't um, didn't pick it, so they got the the uh, stagehands. And were you in Ayatsi House? No, not really. I mean, it was a, a converted movie theater. We had you know, we had a couple of Ayatsi people. I think the, I think the lighting chap was. Ayatsi. Were the pickets successful? No. 
<laughs> and what was it like to move into uh, an old movie theater and try to make it into a theater? Well, it was. Um, it took months before you could get the smell of popcorn out of the dressing rooms. <laughs> uh, they had done most of that before I got back. And did did the crest? I. I think I remember seeing one play, and I think I also remember seeing Richard Bennett do Hamlet there. He did, indeed. And I can't remember much about the theater itself. Did it work as a, the as a theater? Uh, not really, no. I mean, it was an 830-seat theater, and it did have a, a small stage, but it had no um, fly room, no, no backstage space at all. And it had uh, two dressing rooms downstairs. And uh, no, it was very, very awkward. And it was too big, you know, for the, for the purposes. Um, for example, Bill Glasgow was on the board early on. And he was always in a fight with um, my brothers to do uh, new Canadian plays, the sort of thing that he did at Tarragon, you know. Well, they did several, but they couldn't do a season. Um, I mean, it, the theater was just too big. You, particularly mm -hmm. in those days, you would have to have a fairly small theater for that mm -hmm. to work, you know. And what sort of houses did you get? I mean, did you get... Were you playing it to half houses or two thirds or? Uh, I would say, on the whole, half. For some, there was more, and for some, there was less. I mean, one of the best productions that we did actually was uh, uh, on Wee's Antigone. And. Uh, They stayed away in droves. You know. And what was the Toronto theatre-going audience like? What were their appetites? Well, the thing is that at that point, people would um, spend hundreds of dollars to go to New York for a weekend to see theatre, and they wouldn't get their bottoms up to Mount Pleasant. <laughs> you know. And did they want to see Hello, Dolly and South yeah, Pacific? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. So the story is the same as in 2007? About, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it lasted for 12 seasons or 13 seasons, The Crest? Uh, yes, 13. Mm -hmm. And it came to an end because? Uh, because... Um, money, the cat of the council withdrew its support. There had been no councils to begin with at all, you know. Uh, but also, there was a lot of politics. For example, uh, the um, Chief designer at the Crest for a number of years had been Judy Payton Ward. I don't know if you know. No. She was English. She'd worked at the um, at um, Stratford over here, but she'd worked at the Vic in in London, and she was resident designer for quite some time. And uh, it was the year before the Crest closed, I guess. Her parents were coming over to see her. They were on board ship. And unfortunately, they couldn't remember the name of this chap they talked to, who, you know, was being very friendly and saying, you know, why are you going to Canada? And so they said they were going to see their daughter, who was a designer at the Crest Theatre. And, and he said, oh, Oh, well, that's too bad, because it isn't going to be in operation any longer. So your brothers ran out of will or money or just well, labors in keeping it going? 
Well, the, the um, as I say, the kind of council withdrew its grant. Right. right. Yeah. And, that and without that, you, there was no way it could keep going. And as a performer, what was it like to play in the crest? Well, um, you know, for the first two or three years, one practically lived there because we were doing um, a show every two weeks. Do you have two weeks rehearsal yes. for a show? Yes, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it was halfway to summer stock, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, no, no, but no. it was in a practical yeah. sense. Yeah. It was halfway to summer stock. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. I think in the last, um, in the last couple of years, I may have been a show every three weeks, but certainly when I was working there regularly, it was every fortnight. So was it possible to actually make a living as an actress in Toronto in the late 50s? At the crest, um, we started off $75 a week. And I think after about the third year, we graduated to 85. I don't know whether after that anybody got more. I certainly never did. And were people trying to get, you know, CBC radio gigs and doing oh yes. and all the rest yeah, of it? Yeah. And when you did the Crest Hour Company, was that in addition to that? Yes. So the people in the Hour Company, you, you know, it was, that was part of what you did for your Crest salary. Right, right. And would you be in the Hour Company in, in the day at a hi, in a high school in, in uh, Scarborough and then come in and do the show at night? If, if, yeah, if it was in town, obviously, once it went on the road, you know, we were touring. I mean, you didn't, you couldn't play at the Crest and the Hour Company both. And w with you, Murray and Donald, who was the driver of, of that trio? Oh, well, um, I think Murray and Donald equally to begin with, to get the thing started. But then, uh, after that, um, when, uh, when the boys came back from London after the end of the glass cage, um, Murray took a sabbatical, and the idea had been that they would alternate. So Donald ran the, the company that year. And I remember I came back from England to do the summer of the 17th doll. Uh, and then Murray came back from Australia, and Donald went to New York and never came back. So, so right. <laughs> yeah. Right. 